Welcome everyone to the Directed IRA podcast. We are excited to be with you today talking about Roth conversions, baby. Roth, Roth, baby. Yep. We want to convert you to Roth conversions uh, at the right time. Yeah. There's just, there's an art to the Roth conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're going to have a lot of fun here with you and talk about a complex topic, but let me, let's just talk about the why. Can we hit the why? Start with why. Yeah. Start with <laughs> it's why. like a book. So yeah, start yeah. with why. Okay. Tell us First, why. Thank you. All of you that are listening, uh, we're excited to have you here. Some of you may be new to the podcast. My name is Mark Kohler. I'm my associate here, Matt Sorensen. The author of the book, Matt Sorensen, is the author of the book, The Self-Directed IRA Handbook. We're here every week talking about self-directed IRA issues. I'm color commentary generally. Matt's the real brains of the operation. So True story. Yeah. Okay. With that said... <laughs> Let, I'd put it in plain English. So let me put it in plain English. The okay, why. okay. And you can give them a techie answer and confuse okay. everybody. Okay. Yeah. The why. Now I fight this out with financial advisors all the time. And I'm sorry if I may offend some of you that are financial advisors listening to the show. We welcome you. We're glad you're here. There's this big debate. Do I want to do a traditional IRA? Because... Right now I get a tax deduction and we can't predict what your tax rate's going to be in the future. So let's take the tax deduction now versus we want Roth money because Roth is gross tax free and will come out tax free in the future. And the same argument applies in my opinion. We don't know what your tax rate's going to be in the future. So why not just make it a tax free freaking bucket to begin with? So if we know what your tax rate is now. We can calculate it. Let's pay the tax, rip the damn Band-Aid off, and let that Roth bucket grow tax-free and never worry about it again. And I swear, whenever I run the numbers, unless you skew the assumptions in your favor, the Roth wins every time. That's my argument. So I think getting your money into mm -hmm. a Roth bucket is in all of our best interest. The question is now, when, and how. Mm -hmm. That's the why. What do you think? Do you like the why? Yeah, I like the why. I, I like to think of the Roth as like, Short-term pain, long-term gain. Ooh. Because we're bypassing on the tax deduction today. I don't get the tax deduction today, but in the long term, I get some long-term gain. All that appreciation, all of that growth that I'm harvesting at the end of the day from these little seeds that I did have to pay tax on is going to come out totally tax-free. But if I got greedy and I'm like, ah, I need my tax deduction today and I fall victim to this too. So, you know, <laughs> this is full transparency. I got Roth and traditional dollars. But if I want a tax action today in my traditional, now this is going to grow and it's going to come out taxable in retirement. Yeah, yeah. I'm paying tax on the way out. So, um, so it takes some discipline to be Roth. You've got to be disciplined enough to bypass on the tax savings now knowing there's going to be a bigger bucket at the end of the day coming out tax-free when you're at Del Boca Vista. I love it. I love Del Boca Vista. Now, <laughs> here's why I tend to win the argument, and financial advisors will not concede on this, and this is where we bump heads, is in the models where those that are average, and they're not just financial advisors. A lot of CPAs are like, oh, I want the tax deduction now. Oh, we mm -hmm. got to get that tax deduction. They think they're doing some magic for their client's tax return. That's not tax planning. Freaking A, I've got better tax deduction strategies than just putting money in a 401k or a traditional IRA. But where we win this argument and why you're listening to this podcast, I hope, is that you're self-directing your Roth IRA. And what that means, and I'll say it, generally those that self-direct are going to get a greater rate of return than the standard S&P 500 because you're investing in what you know. The reason why the IRS is starting to audit these mega Roths and these six-figure, seven-figure, ten-figure Roths is because these people were self-directing. Do you think they wanted that measly little tax deduction at the very beginning when they were going to 10x the Roth? Hell no. So when you start to make the assumption that a Roth IRA could get a 10, 15, or 20% return, psh, now you know the Roth's yeah. going to win that argument. And so when I throw that in the equation, they're like, well, you can't assume that you're going to get that rate of return. Well, that's because you work for freaking the Satan. You know, you work for <laughs> Wall Street. So, of course, you can't win that argument you, or concede on Mark's that. Mark's got opinions, you know. Yes, He's got opinions, I, you know. Late in the day. It. So. I love it. Um, let, let me say it another way is. You mean the, t the PC way? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Bring, up, bring back yeah. our audience. Yeah. Let, okay. me, let me, you know, chill out. All right, I just want to, you know, 
No, this is just, let's just be logical here. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. I won't be offended No emotion. By that. No, okay. not emotional. Just okay. All right. Fine. Just logical. It's just like, sure. just, the, just the facts, man. That hurt, that hurt but go <laughs> <on>. <laughs> All right. Think about your traditional, okay? You're going to tax deduction, sure. But any growth that I have, I'm paying tax on. So if I, if I put $100,000 in this thing and I end up having a $10 million account at the end of the day from investment growth, Investing this thing for 40 years, 10, 10 million's coming out taxable. I got $100,000 in tax deductions? Mm. That doesn't sound very appetizing. And if you flip it the other way, if this is a Roth, I'm going to bypass tax deductions on 100000 because that 10 million account, and you could say a million, 500000 whatever end number you want to say, yeah. is all coming out tax free. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> but but you got to wait. Yeah. And so people are like, but I want my tax deductions now. You gotta wait. Yes, Matt made my argument for me in a little more PC method way because he's making assumptions that your Roth is going to be worth a lot of money, and a financial advisor is like, "Well, on an eight percent return, you know, and not your age, you know, the tax deduction now and the time value of money, like, screw it. We're not doing that little yeah. Morgan Stanley whatever." Well, here's here's another thing they'll tell you, and that we're going to get to the Roth conversion thing because, by the way, guys, if you're a traditional account right now and you're feeling like, "Oh, I should be on the Roth party," you can convert to Roth. We're going to get to that, and you probably know that, but we're going to go yeah. over how to do it. But I did have an important point, and I'm okay. going to try to remember it here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Just, while you're thinking, I will say this: You want a Roth? That's why we want you listening to this podcast. And we're going to show you and teach you how to do it in chunks so that you don't take a huge tax hit in the process. So we want to go how to do it, when to do it. I just wanted to hit the why. So if yeah. hopefully we've sold you on the fact that a tax-free ATM is better than a little tax deduction on the front. Okay, I did want to debunk one thing. Because here's another thing the financial advisor, um, the crappy financial advisor, there's good ones, will, yeah. will tell you too. Well, when you're in retirement, you're going to make less money. So you're going to be in a lower tax bracket. So don't worry about taking distributions from your retirement account when you're going to be in a low tax bracket. Really? Are we all trying to accumulate assets, rental properties, businesses, stuff that pays us income? It might be passive. We're not having to go out and work for it. But we're still trying to maintain our income. We've been building this machine of stuff we're trying to have in retirement that could be still taxable income. Yeah. I'm not banking on not having income in retirement so I can pay little to no tax on my retirement account distribution. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if many people are shooting for that either. I know. I want to tell my clients, you're going to be making more money in retirement. Thank you. That's who I want to talk to. <laughs> yeah. Not the guy trying to tell me I'm making Is that money. what's in my financial plan that yeah. you just did for me? Thank you. Your commercial you won't was be so making big. money in retirement? Oh, damn yeah. it. But that commercial during the Super Bowl was so sexy. Now you're telling me you're going to be in a lower bracket. What you're meaning I'm making less money in retirement? I thought you were, oh, whatever. Okay. All right. All right. So there's How the How do we why. get to Roth? Okay. You can get there. So if you're sitting in the, tr if you're sitting in traditional IRA or 401k, Okay, you can convert tr 401k traditional dollars to Roth 401k, just like you can do traditional IRA to Roth IRA. Okay, so, so we can get to the Roth party. Yeah, so the can is, so how, and some ways to work, some loopholes, but I like the can. This is an important point for everybody. No matter what income level you're at, mm. you can always convert to a Roth, whether it's a traditional to Roth or inside a 401k at your day job to Roth, inside your solo 401k to Roth, a SEP to Roth, a simple to Roth. You can always convert to Roth at any age, at any income level. So any account that's told you, well, you can't have a Roth, you make too much money. BS, that's wrong. There are contribution yeah. rules that we know how to work around, but they've hyper-focused on that and they are uneducated. Or they haven't pulled their head out in the last 10 years, because that was the rule about 10 years ago. Yeah. High income earners couldn't convert to Roth, but that got kicked out. So now high income earners who may be out of making Roth contributions in the front door, you can always convert. So so th that was kind of like, or if you're like Googling around, you're like, Mark and Matt, I found this article from 2012 that says you can't convert to Roth. Yeah, that's old. Okay, the laws have changed on that. So don't worry, you can convert at any income. Okay, now we did the why. We did the can. I want to do the when before we do mm. how. Okay, I'll do the when. Well, right, I'll, I'll do the how. You yeah, that's right. If okay. I can, if I can do the when, because here's okay. the when. Um, if, if you were in the, here in the studio, I've got this iPad creating a tower of tax brackets. Like, and in in here, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this is from my calendar. That the 2023 calendar will come out here in the next uh, few weeks. 
I'm trying to make sure it's out before Christmas. But what I put in our calendar every year, and this goes out to all of our clients, uh, uh, you can, you've got this tax bracket scenario. And so what you want to say is, okay, I can do it, but I'm going to pay tax when I convert. So if I have $10,000 in traditional and I convert it to Roth, the IRS says you can do that and never pay tax again. But you got to pay tax on your bracket that you're in now, your most recent bracket. Now, everybody know you've got graduated rates. So if I make a hundred grand and I'm single, you're going to pay 12% on the first 10 grand, 22% on the next 31 grand, and then about 24%, no, 10% on the first 10 grand, 12% on the next 31, and 22% on the next 50. So you, you pay based on this graduated scale. That's how American tax law works. Well, when you convert to Roth, the IRS says your next dollar is taxed at the highest bracket you're in. So if I'm currently making $90,000 a year and I make one more dollar, I go from the 22% bracket to the 24% bracket. Now that's only a 2% jump. So you may say, I'm willing to convert that traditional to Roth because the timing works for me. I'm only going to pay 2% more in federal tax. But... If I jump from 170 grand, once I make uh, more than 170 grand, this is the single bracket, by the way. If I make the next thousand dollars I make after 170, I now pay 32%. Mm. So now I've got a six percent jump. Eight. Eight? Oh, yeah, sorry, 8% jump. Oh, yeah, I'm an accountant. Yeah, who's the CPA here? Yeah, who's the CPA here? <laughs> who's the CPA now? <laughs> little, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> little SNL. <laughs> doing a little cheerleader thing. Okay, so you may say, okay, if I'm under 170 grand as a single taxpayer and I can convert up to 170 grand, I'm not going to get into that higher bracket. So Matt and I call that chunking. Let's chunk at those traditional dollars every year until we hit these break points. Now, the first big one and the biggest jump in the tax bracket is this 6% from 24 to 32. Eight. <laughs> eight. Eight. 8%, damn it. <laughs> okay, 24 to 32. That break point, I'll shut up here, Matt. I just wanted to get this uh -huh. out. The break point is 170 if you're single. Anything over that, you jump 8% up. For married couples, that break point is 340. So once you, any dollar over a married filing joint, over 340,000, that next dollar is taxed 8% more. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you're chunking, let's stay between, if, if possible, let's, now I'll give you the next. Let break me point. give you, yeah. let me put this into an example here. Let's say you had $200,000 right now that you want to convert to Roth. Okay. two hundred. And you're like, and you're right at one of these break points. And you're like, Hey, I c if I convert 200, the first hundred, let's say, let's say you're, let's say you make two hundred grand a year, and you're ma and you're married, married. Okay, okay so you're two hundred grand and married. So I have one hundred and forty grand before I hit my neck. I go yeah. up eight percent. So what you might want to do is say, all right, I'm willing to do one hundred and forty of it, but the next sixty, I'm going to wait till January first, and I'm going to chunk that over into 2023's tax year. Yes. Now I've that has saved me eight percent on that sixty grand which I can't do the math on that, but that's some tax savings, guys, yeah. just by paying attention to the tax bracket breaks and this time of year. A lot of people are converting right now because they're looking at 2022 and saying, all right, what's my income this year? Maybe it's been a tough year. They're looking at what can I do next year? And sometimes we like to straddle the year, so okay. to speak. I just asked Siri. Siri. I said, what's 8% times 60 grand? Yep. 4,800. So by there waiting one day... Or a month or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I convert yeah. up until December, January 1st, and, and and just pushing that 60 into the next year. And that's just good calendaring. Yeah, good calendaring. <laughs> yeah, that's why the MJK 2023 calendar will save you money. Now, okay, so let's summarize that, everybody. This is why our phones ring off the hook in the month of November and December. Not only are we worried about paying family members and are we gonna, what are we doing with our S Corp? And am I doing an HSA? And I, am I paying my kids? Am I doing a Roth? And I, oh, I need to figure out what bracket mm. I might be in this year. And should I do a Roth conversion chunk strategy? So I'll, I'll say this right now. 
If you're single and make less than 170 grand, I think there's a great window there for that 8% jump. Mm -hmm. That's the first big jump. If you're married filing joint, it's under 340. Mm -hmm. Until Until you hit there, might as well go for it. You're in the middle tax brackets. It's not too nasty. Um, but if you got the big amounts and we get those clients that are like, man, I've, I've got 400 grand in this 401k. I want to get the whole thing over to Roth. Yeah. Okay. You could bite the bullet and do it all in one year, or we could chunk it a little bit and be a little more practical about the tax planning and the, cause it's going to hurt, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to be stroking a check to the IRS. So you're going to have to have some of that cash on hand. And what you do not want to do, never do this. Never take a distribution or try to pay the tax due on the conversion from the retirement account itself. We have people that do that, and it drives me nuts. And we, like, call them and it's like, are you sure? Because okay. you're taking a distribution, by the way, paying penalty to do that. So now, never Matt do that. said something very subtle. Okay, everybody, let me repeat what he said. When you do this conversion, you're going to owe the tax on that conversion on April 15th. Okay, so if I do this conversion this month in December, you're going to do the math on your chunk conversion don't forget state tax by the way um yeah. i'm going to bring up a, a strategy there by the way okay so so you're going to do the math you're going to owe that tax by april 15th you've got to have the money in after tax savings accounts to pay that tax bill you don't want to take the money out of the retirement to get pay it some of you may be thinking oh if i convert it to roth the roth account pays the tax no 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 you do on your 1040. A lot of people think the retirement account itself is paying the tax. No, you are. And if you take a distribution out of the retirement account to pay the tax, it's a 10% penalty and tax on that amount. Now, if it's traditional, you might be able to pull out some of your contributions and some things like that. But I mean, we don't, yeah, I just don't pull money out of the retirement account to pay the tax. No, yeah, on the traditional, you can't pull money yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, there's no way. There's Roth, no basis. Roth, original Roth conversions, you can. So, yeah, just just make sure you have the money set aside somewhere else to pay the tax. And frankly, I've had some clients just get on a payment plan because um, they couldn't come up with it. Frankly, yeah, paying for the Roth that, conversion. But that, just remember, that is the price you pay to get into the Roth party. Okay, and I want to correct something, Matt. I just, I love the way you said that. If I put money into a Roth directly from my name to a Roth mm-hmm. at any time during the rest up until age 59 and a half, I can pull that contribution out penalty free and tax free contributions. Cause it was, yeah. it was a contribution yep. directly to the Roth. Right. If I convert money to a Roth, you have five I can, years. I have to wait five years before I could pull that out. Yes. So that's why people don't convert and pull it out of the Roth to pay the tax. Yeah. Cause you pay, you the pay a penalty. You yeah, pay you the pay penalty. penalty. Ah, yeah. very good. Yeah, the IRS thought of that. Okay. And they're like, Oh, you want to raid your Roth, your new Roth that yeah. you just paid to convert and like yeah. to pay the tax? Okay, now let's talk state tax. Penalty. I got another cool strategy. We thought we'd record this podcast in a half hour, but it's a, it's evolving. This is good stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I had a client I just met with this last week. They're moving from California to Arizona. California right now, 13.3% tax rate. Arizona this year is 45 Come January 1st, it's 2.5. Yeah, baby. So uh, I told this client, you're, you've got more income in California this last year. Your Arizona income, your, your income this coming year is going to be a little lower. And you're going to be in a, you're going to go from 13.3 down to 2.5. Mm. So any of you that are changing state domicile and you know you are yeah. in the next year, where we've seen the migration of people out of California, out of yes. New York, out of Illinois to states like Arizona, Texas, like Florida that are no income tax or low income tax states. Yeah. You've got nine states with no state tax. So you may say, ooh, if I'm going to chunk, but I know I might be moving mm-hmm. to Tennessee or Washington or Texas or Nevada or Florida, and I'm going to make a move in the next 12 to 18 months, and I could save all that state tax. I might hold off on the chunking again because why prematurely pay that state tax if I can time mm-hmm. it properly? So there's some timing there. Okay, now I got a good one too. You ready? Okay. I just yeah. pushed Matt around here on the video. Yeah. <laughs> a little Elaine from Seinfeld movement, yeah. you know, where she pushes Kramer <laughs> across the room. Matt said earlier, let's say you've got 200 grand in um, cash. and In a traditional. In a traditional, sorry, in traditional. And you're going to convert 140 now 
before you go up to the next tax bracket, and you're going to convert 60 in January. Now, let's think about that. You may say, well, I don't know what I'm going to make next year, so maybe yeah. I'll wait until next December. Okay, but here's what's cool. If you convert, correct me if I'm wrong, if I convert that 60 on January 2nd and then redeploy it, maybe I get a 20% return next year on that 60. Mm -hmm. So if I convert it in yeah. January, oh, I'm yeah. not paying the tax until April of 2024 on 60 grand, yeah. even though it might be worth seventy, eighty thousand dollars at mm -hmm. the end of the year, mm -hmm. I'm only paying tax on the value, the date of the conversion. Right. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So the earlier so you convert tax, it. Tax delay, I mean, it's like paying later. Yeah. Now, if you're self-directing, let's say you own a rental property, and you're like, oh, I think this property's going to go up in value. You call up the appraiser, say, I need a fair appraisal for the lowest and best use. Is that true? Fair market. Fair market. Fair market value. Fair market value. And I, you know, you're not cooking lowest the lowest. And best. But I want the lowest and best. You notice how that was. Yeah, it was like. Lowest and worst use. sound right. <laughs> lowest and but worst use. That'll get you a low value. Yeah, yeah. So I get an appraisal. I convert at the appraised value. Not yeah. what could happen a year from now. Yeah. So for those of you that like have stocks or mutual funds, or you just sell them go to cash and convert the cash. For those of you that already are self-directing and you own real estate or a private company or an IRA LLC or a note, you can still convert. You just got to get an evaluation of that asset. We can help with that, send you in the right direction on how to get that done. But you need an appraisal for real estate um, and it's got to be a fair value. So you can't be like, well, this property is worth 300, but I got some bozo to say it's worth 100. You know, that... It's, That's an odd yeah, problem. Yeah. Okay, now we checked off. You're just bleeding now. Perfect transition into how. Yep. See, we did why, can, yep. when. Now, how? How do you do this? How is pretty easy because you have to just elect it in writing. And now remember, we talked about when. We're going to do this before December 31st if you want it for 2022 tax purposes. But you have to elect it in writing. Now, for IRAs, you have an IRA custodian. Even if you got an IRA LLC, though, you still got to do this through your IRA custodian. So you have a Roth conversion election form that says, I designate to convert this amount to Roth. Okay. And then now if you're a traditional account, you're going to need to open a new Roth I account. That. Before you send okay. in the letter, you got to have a yeah. Roth. Because they're going to go, well, where's your Roth account? Yeah. So step one is really opening the Roth you're going to convert yes. into. And this is another consideration because if you're chunking, you're going to have two accounts, right? Because you're still going to have your traditional account and you're going to have your Roth account. If you're converting the whole thing at once, you can close your traditional and just move all the money over to a Roth. But you're going to need a new account because it's a Roth account app. There's different rules for it. There's different disclosures. There's different custodial agreements. All this stuff is different. So you will actually do a different account app, whether you're at directed or anywhere else. You elect to convert in writing. Now what's going to happen is now your money's Roth growing tax-free, coming out tax-free. We're going to send you a 1099-R in January the following year, so right now, this would be 2023 of January, we're going to send you a 1099-R that's going to say the taxable amount, the fair market value of what you converted that's going to go on to your 1040 as ordinary income. Now, you don't pay self-employment tax or anything on it, but it's going at your regular tax rates like Mark's been talking about, those tax brackets. So that's kind of the mechanics of it. Now, I want to say this for you solo K owners because you guys always screw it up. For those of you that particularly are doing it yourself, you actually have to do a written election. You have to issue a 1099-R. If you don't do that, you do not have a Roth conversion. You can't just write on your 1040, you did a Roth conversion. You didn't. You have to write, have a written election for it. Our solo case, which, which we put it in a binder. Unless it's on our service. We yeah. have a service for this. Yeah, if you're a custodial account with us on the solo case, we just do it for you. But if you're kind of self-administering your solo 401k, and we have some clients that like to do that because they, they just like that control, and that's cool, but... You have to have a written election, which we have the form you can use for it that you can do internally yourself, but you got to go do a 1099-R. And we can help in the law firm with that if, if necessary. We, we've done those for Roth conversion clients on solo case. So now if I have solo 401k yeah. and I'm self-administering, I'm going to have to open a separate account. Exactly. Yes. And then well, unless you converted the whole thing and that now it just becomes your Roth account. But if you're holding traditional and Roth dollars, those must be invested separately track separately and separate bank accounts. Okay. Now here's where it gets good. I'm sure someone's listening going, well, my raw, my, sorry, my traditional IRA owns an LLC or my 401k owns an LLC. It doesn't have cash. 
if I open a bank account, I can't move anything over there. It owns 40% of an LLC or 80% of an LLC, or I have a traditional IRA LLC that owns 100% of an LLC. Mm -hmm. So in those instances, you're really not needing to open a bank account. You're having to go to the law firm and go, I need a membership transfer agreement. Mm -hmm. I'm now creating a two member LLC. Mm -hmm. is, is that the way? Yeah, but you're still gonna need a bank account at the end of the day, because there's gonna be money that needs to flow from somewhere, or you need a, like if, you know. Yeah, you, ultimately you need yeah, a bank account. Yeah. But to do this, if I just have a, if my IRA just owns an LLC. 100%. And I, and I want I get a valuation. Yeah. I um, open my Roth account. Yeah. And I put $100 in it. Yeah. So I have my Roth account, and then I do a written election and say, I'm gonna transfer X value. Because there's no yeah. cash to that transfer. Right. Everything's in the LLC. Yeah. So yeah, they'll I, do an in-kind conversion is what we call it. Okay. And then you transfer the ownership of the LLC and it's it's a transfer on conversion. So the ownership of the LLC goes from your traditional to your Roth. The whatever portion. And yeah. that's done through a membership transfer yeah. agreement through the law firm would do that for yes. directed IRA. Yes. Now I will say, remember, if you're not converting the whole thing and you're saying, well, 100% of it's traditional, but I want to do... 50% of that now to Roth and I'll do the other 50% later. I'll do one third now and I'll do the next two thirds, you know, over the next two years. Okay. But you, now that single member LLC you had, you weren't filing a tax return. Now it's a partnership because now you have multiple owners of it. So now that you got to start filing a partnership tax return, if you convert the whole thing at once, it's hundred percent owned. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's some simplicity in it too, where clients will be like, ah, I'd rather just bite the bullet. Even if I'm bumping into another tax rate and just get it over with, and maybe I've got a sweet investment deal that I'm going to have a big return on anyways. I want that all to be Roth. There's a few other considerations to think yeah, about. Yeah. The, a good time to convert to Roth too is when you know, and it's not insider trading. Yeah. It's just you know that your traditional IRA is about to have a big payout. Yeah, you're you, like that. you got the home run pitch coming right over the yeah, plate. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> holy crap, my traditional IRA is going to double in value. Yeah. That's a good time to go, yeah. Quick valuation, convert yeah. to Roth. Convert then, before you swing. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Because the like ball that. goes out of the park, you want it to be a Roth IRA hitting it, not a traditional. <laughs> That's right. I love it. Okay. Um, wow. Let me think. So when, why, how, our studio audience. Is there any good questions here in our studio audience that we're missing here? Uh, live studio audience. Live studio audience. Ruth no. IRA. The what? Ruth IRA? The baby Ruth IRA? Oh, oh the like baby Ruth IRA. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I think um, the nice thing here that I want to reiterate is that when you say, okay, I'm going to start trying to get all of my IRAs in Roth position, think big picture. Look at your spouse's IRA. Look at your kids' IRAs. Could you be converting them? Some of your kids might be in school, younger, and for some reason they had a traditional IRA handed down to them from wherever. Ooh, I've got two issues. Okay, so let's talk about inherited IRAs in a minute. But here's another one. I just talked to a client yesterday about this. They said, well, I've got a couple hundred grand in traditional IRA. I only have 15 grand in Roth. Um, and I want to um, do a backdoor Roth this year. And I say, well, you can't do a backdoor Roth until you convert all that traditional money to Roth. Mm -hmm. What the hell? I mean, I could go get six, seven grand in a Roth IRA right now but I'm held back because of this traditional. And I said, yeah, unless, and she had a side hustle. I said, let's open up that, that uh, solo 401k, balance that traditional money into your solo 401k. And now you can do the backdoor Roth and convert what you want in the 401k when mm -hmm. the time's right. Mm -hmm. So rather than chunk, I yeah. can move traditional to, because your traditional has to be converted before you can do a backdoor Roth. But if I can push it into a 401k, I have, more, yeah. I have more options. Yeah, there's like an ordering rule to do conversions when you're doing a backdoor Roth IRA. So that's another strategy here just to keep in mind. This is separate from just a regular Roth conversion and converting traditional to Roth. But yeah. Um, yeah, good point. Now, you cannot do Roth conversions, though, on inherited IRAs. That's what I wanted to ask you. So, so grandma dies. You get her inherit. you know, you inherit the traditional IRA from grandma. That is always going to be traditional IRA. You know, for the next 10 years, you get to hold that. You can't convert it to Roth. Now, mm -hmm. if grandma was awesome and left you a inherited Roth IRA, oh, then okay. you got the inherited Roth IRA. Oh, my IRA. gosh. Here's the next strategy. This is so huge. Dying? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> is this, if you want to really get 
Not a lot of takers on it. No, no, no. Here's my strategic move. Right now, in the next five weeks, call grandma (laughs) and say, hey, or mom or dad, and go, hey, uh, do you have an IRA? Yeah. Am I the beneficiary? Yeah. Hey, I'll pay the tax for you to convert that to Roth. Because if when you die, I want to inherit a Roth IRA. And so now you've frozen the value on that traditional. And so I'm going to inherit a Roth IRA, which gives me a tax-free ATM for 10 years after they die. But I pay the tax now. Mm-hmm. You have a problem with that? No, that's okay. <laughs> I just, I like, I see me like talking to my parents about that and they're going to be like, no. <laughs> you weren't getting anything. No. <laughs> yeah, well... You, you know, know, for those of you that have that, I mean, well, I love my parents. But I did this with my, <laughs> I, I did this with my mom. I said, hey, um, if I, op- I, and I even told my brother and sister, I'm like, hey, can we open a Roth IRA <laughs> for mom? I'll fund it, but I want to be the beneficiary of it. And the, But you kids don't get the other half of that. I'm the beneficiary of it. Sign here. So it doesn't go into mom's estate. That Roth IRA is essentially mine to inherit from mom. I would expect nothing less from you. No, like, well, you make me sound really bad. It was smart. Oh, it was thank very you. smart. So I said, Mom, I'll fund your Roth IRA. That's a win win. I just want to be the, the only person that lost in that deal was the IRS. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See, there we go. Win win. That's a good strategy. So go. So here's your strategy in the next five weeks. Don't talk your parents into converting to Roth and pay the tax. That's a weird conversation. Fair. <laughs> but go to mom and dad and go, hey, have you funded your Roth IRA this year? No, we're too old. We're not funding our Roth anymore. Hey, could I put the money in for you? I'll be, the, as long as I can be the beneficiary, is that okay? Uh, sure. I mean, you want it? Yeah, just make me the beneficiary and I'll fund it. Love it. There you go. Love it. All right. Yeah. Okay, uh, last last little tidbit I wanted to leave is, um, and I've just seen this with clients over the years and even myself as I did a Roth conversion. That moment when you're converting, you're like, oh, the tax. Just think of your account in 10 years and it's going to be bigger because it's grown. You've made good investments. Even if you've just been hitting base hits and it's been growing, I mean, it's going to be a lot bigger than it was 10 years prior. So, Look to that 10-year, look to yourself in 10 years. That's the blanket you want to put. Yeah, that's what you want to wrap around yourself to make Mm -hmm. you feel good is you're paying the IRS and sending them more money than you otherwise would have had to. I love it. Great comment. All right. Well, that, my friends, is, boy, that's a great tutorial conversation about Roth conversions. I want to thank all of you for being here. If you enjoyed this, please share this podcast with your friends, family, your mom before you convert a, <laughs> money to a Roth or a former Roth. And <laughs> give us five stars. We'd love it. Yeah. Um, thank and you, everybody. Stay calm. Self-direct on. <laughs>